Hey, I'm Orisi and welcome to the episode 15 about creating a game in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episodes, then we'll highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. Um, so in this video, what I'm planning to cover is another aspect of object-oriented and it's inheritance, which basically means to create a template that uses other templates. Okay, so first of all, let's just take a look about the different entities we have. So we got um, players, we got enemies, we got upgrades, and we got bullet. Now there's a link between player and enemies. They are kind of the same thing, except that one of them is controlled by the player and the other one moves randomly. There are other differences, but they do share a bunch of attributes. For example, those attributes right there, and those attributes are exactly the same. So we could create a template that uses um, those attributes. And the way to do that, um, well, first let's just revamp that a little bit. So instead of having a, a create player that sets the player to the value, we'll create a function that returns self. And instead of calling create player, we will do player equal player like this. Okay, so now if we go back up, we'll see um, patterns with our um, constrictor. So as you can see, this right there is really similar to that right there. So we could actually combine them and create a new template that will do exactly this. So let's call it actor. So actor will be a new template. And what it will do is it will do that. Okay, let, let's do it in, in a couple steps. So let's just agree that calling this um, or just calling that is exactly the same thing. There is no difference whatsoever because it's the same code. Um, but obviously we don't want to hard code the values in our constructor. We want to pass them as parameters. We can use that for different type of actors. Um, so the list of attributes we will need um, to create all sort of actor is those, which is um, exactly the same than the entities. So we need those parameters to generate the entity. And then on top of that, we also need information to create those parameters. So the HP, we need information about the HP and the attack speed. The attack counter and the aim angle will always be zero by default. So there's no point in adding them right there. So when we um, create this, we will call entity with those parameters and we will set the HP to whatever was passed as parameters something like that and here we need to say 10 HP and one attack speed okay so now let's just do a little recap of what is going on when I do for example player player equal player so I enter this function I call this so I go here I create a entity I go here so I create an object with this bunch of attributes. Then I add a bunch of function link with them. And at the end, I return it. So um, this right there looks kind of similar to that um, with the, the uh, more attributes for the functions. Then I add on top of the, this, um, on top of this um, object, I add a bunch of new attributes that were not part of the um, entity package. So I add those and then I return that new package, this right there, I return that here. So now I got the attributes from the entity itself, then I got the attributes from the actor, and then on top of that I'm adding um, attributes that only player have. So um, actor, an actor by default don't, don't have those attributes, but a player which is an actor does have those attributes right there. So this is a little recap of what's going on. So now if we want to do um, that for the enemy, we just call this and then we need to add the HP, which is 10 and the attack speed. Let's say that the attack speed and the uh, um, HP is 10 for the enemy. So something like that. So what I'm going to do next is to do inheritance with functions. We have done it with um, attributes, it was kind of easy, so with number and string, but we can also do it with function. So first, let's make something clear. Um, at any point, we can override the values of the object itself. So if I wanted, I could say 
Yes, I did specify I wanted a HP of 10, but now I want a HP of 12. I could do that. You can change the values at any point and you can change um, anything you want. So I could say, hey, I want my type to be enemy. Obviously, it's not a good move to do in a player constructor, but it would be possible to do that. Um, and one thing we can do is to override function. So up there, we have a function, let's say, called self draw. And let's say that, no, I, I no longer want to use that function. What I want to do instead of that is just do a console log one. Then self draw will be, when we'll call self draw, it's going to call console log one. But it's only going to do that if um, we call the constrictor. So let's say we have two entities. So entity one is a player, and the entity two is another, let's say, entity to is an actor, for example. Obviously, normally you need to pass parameters, but let's say I put parameters. Um, if I call entity one draw, it's going to here, it's going to generate the all objects. Then I say, hey, I want I'm overwriting the draw, the default draw by this new function. So when I call this, it's going to do that. But if I call entity two draw, because it has not been overwritten here, I'm going to call the default one, which is this right there, which is normally what we want to do. So this is going to be very useful. And the first thing we will do with that is, if you remember correctly um, here in our update position, we, we have to split it in two parts. So um, when we update a entity, if it's type player, then we do that kind of stuff. If it's not a player, then we do that. So um, instead of doing this, we could simply say, hey, by default, do this. And in case, if it's a player, what we are going to do right here is, um, I no longer want the default update position. Override the update, the default update position with this new functions. And now we no longer have to test if it's a player or if the, the type of the entity because um, if it's a player, then we have overwritten the update position and we will call that whenever we call um, update position from a entity. So now what I'm going to do is to go in our code and check the different um, function link with actors. So function that can only be called by an actor, what an actor can perform. So for example, right there, an actor can perform an attack. So we'll take that instead of being a, a function like separated function, I'm going to place it right here, exactly like we did in the last video for entities. So it will be self perform attack and we transform the actor for self and then right here, perform special attack, we could place it right here. Self, perform special attack, and self, there we go. So now one great thing we can do is that any enemy we create can shoot bullets, uh, because a enemy use the constructor actor and an actor as all the code needed to shoot a bullet. Now there is a bunch of problems right now with our code. First of all, we never update the attack counter of our um, of our enemy. So even if we call self perform attack, nothing will happen because um, this will never be over 50. And we don't have the logic yet to um, update the aim angle. And on top of that, um, in our update loop, what we do is that we test the collision between the bullet and the enemy. And obviously, if an enemy shoot a bullet, it's going to collide with itself. And if it collides, then we delete the bullets. So, <laughs> so when the enemy will shoot a bullet, it will just disappear, which is naturally what we want. So eventually, we will need to make the distinction between a bullet shot by a player and a bullet shot by an enemy, but I will keep that um, for later. So let's just fix, um, actually for now, let's just remove that um, logic. So the logic where we um, do the collision test between, um, between enemies and bullets. So one way to update the attack counter for enemies would be to do exactly the same thing than the player. So right here, um, for the player, we increase the attack counter by the attack speed. We could just go here. Actually, I've already done it. 
<laughs> um, we could just increase the attack counter by the attack speed and we could also try on every single frame to perform an attack. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not work because the attack counter will be not high enough but let's just make it that way. Um, but as you can see, there's another pattern that we see. Every time that the entity is an actor, we want to update it, and then we want to update the attack counter. So right here, we update, then we increase the attack counter. So this is a pattern, and every time you see a pattern, you can use a template for it. Um, so what we are going to do is to remove those and place them in the actor template, right here. Okay, so what we actually want to do is to change the update function so it updates the attack counter. So if we only do that, then it's not going to work because when we will call update, it's not going to call the update position. It's not going to go to call the rights, only going to update the attack counter. So we want to do both. Um, so we cannot do that. For the player, when we say, hey, I want to override the update position, we said, in a way, we don't care what is the default for updating entity, I really don't care. I'm just overwriting it completely. Well, in our case with the update loop, we don't want to do that. We, we, we want, hey, I want to update, I want to use that function. And on top of that, I want to increase the attack counter, which is really different. So one easy way to fix it would be to just copy paste the content, place it there and then overwrite it. So yes, this will work, but in the long term, um, this is a not good idea, especially as the project grows, there will be more and more function. This is just not viable, so don't do this. The right way to do it is to um, save the, um, the value of the self update right before overwriting it. Let's call it super update. So we save the content of super um, of self update. So it's right here and then we can call it. So we save it somewhere in that variable, then we overwrite it and then we can call it whenever we want. It's kind of like when we want to do swapping. Let's say I got A and I got B. I want to swap the values. What you need to do is to create a temp that will all the value of A then you can override B, uh, override A with the new value of B, and then you can set B to the temporary value. It's the same system except it's with functions. But in JavaScript, functions are like values. So this will actually work. So now let's just check if it works. So if we go here, update our project, it still works. Um, as planned. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And in the next video, what we are going to do is to just continue um, refactoring our code, making it um, object oriented. We are going to do that with bullets, with upgrades, with um, player, pretty much everything that is in the um, update loop right now will be gone and will be put in um, their um, constrictors. So thanks a lot for watching um, this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. See ya.